I love tea. Uh, this Adagio tea, this chai tea is delicious. If you haven't tried it, you should check it out. Uh, not a paid endorsement, by the way. So there's been a lot of great comments and questions on Tech for Psych just in the last week. I love it, guys. Just keep it coming. And I'll keep doing these videos so that I can answer some of the questions. We can have a fun back and forth dialogue like I've done before. But real quick, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit subscribe, click that bell so you get notifications when I upload new content. If you're interested in one-on-one -on -one coaching, be sure to go to www.techforsyke.com slash coaching and apply. Not everybody's gonna be a good match, but hopefully uh, we can figure out how to work together and I'll try to get back to everybody that applies. All right, so the first question today is coming from Raman Khan. I'm assuming that this is the translation thing because the spelling's really bad, but he simply asks, does it hurt when you wear it? Okay, and he put that on the How Personal EEG Devices work page. So in that video, I talk about several different personal EEG devices. And uh, this is a good time to talk about how they actually fit on the head and like how do they feel. Certainly one of the most comfortable ones is the Muse headband. I could wear this all day. It does push your ears a little bit forward if you have it tight behind your ears in order to get that rubber electrode to get uh, the bioimpedance down for good EEG signal. But I have no problem sitting here and uh, meditating with the Muse headband on. And they really had to design it that way because they went for the meditation niche. They wanted to make it uh, and needed to make it very comfortable. So the Muse headband is very comfortable. You just have a little bit of uh, metal resting against your forehead and a little bit of the rubber electrodes touching behind your ears. But other than that, you can adjust it to the size of your head and it just, it obviously doesn't hurt at all when I put it on. The BrainLink Lite from Macolect, also similar to Muse, very comfortable. It's got a band around my head. It's got the frontal sensors on my forehead and uh, it's light, it's um, snug and no pain whatsoever. This one is really comfortable as well. I'm gonna have a review coming out on this one pretty soon. A uh, Chinese company sent it to me to, to take a look at, so it should be interesting. And they'll be sending me the BrainLink Pro pretty soon. They just came out with it, so I'm gonna be reviewing both of those pretty soon. So in the email string, Macro Select also talked about sending me their new product called JII, which is an EEG device with a camera in it. And as I'm editing this video, I'm looking at their website and it looks so cool, I'm excited to actually try it out. The Emotive Epoch, this one actually almost feels good. If you guys use those uh, little springy things that you put on your head that kind of go down over your head and almost like massage your head, it almost reminds me of that. All the sensors kind of just come down over your head and it actually feels kind of good when you put it on. I could see where over time maybe a little bit of pressure would, um, would get to you, but for the most part it's very comfortable. Unfortunately, I'd say the one that is probably the least comfortable is the Emotive Insight. And I understand they have to really get the sensors in there to lower the bioimpedance so they get a good EEG signal. And if you guys have seen my previous videos where I had an old Emotive Insight and they sent me a new one, the frame was a lot more tight, okay? And it's not as adjustable as the other one. So I think that partly comes into it, but I know that when I put it on my head, there's a reference electrode right here on the temporal side that kind of is resting on the bone and the sensor is a little pointy pushing in. And then, um, you know, I've kept it on my head for an extended period of time before, and it's like I take it off and there'll actually be like little dents in my skin. Not that it like hurts, but uh, it's a little bit more uncomfortable than the others, to be completely honest. But still, I want to answer the question comprehensively, so I just want to make sure, uh, Raman, if you think that like the devices are sending electrical impulses actually into your skin and then affecting you that way, that's not what's going on here. All these devices are very passive. They're not sending any electricity into your skin or into the brain. They're kind of just sitting there detecting the voltage changes that are going on in your brain. So there's no active like uncomfortable element. The only thing that is uncomfortable is that you have the device sitting on your head. Okay, so our second question is from Carlos L. Coach. He asked, hey, can I use Muse for napping or deep sleep? Do you know if I can use apps for this? Thanks. So when you look at the Muse headband, it actually doesn't like attach to your head, right? It kind of sits on top of your ears and um, you know, it's meant for sitting meditation. I wouldn't try to sleep on this because if you try to roll around, it's just gonna sort of come off and uh, you know, it's gonna mess up the electrical connection. So I wouldn't recommend trying to wear the Muse for sleep. Um, when you say use it for sleep though, I do believe that through meditative practice, you can 
learn to calm down the body and the nerves so that you can go into sleep more effectively. So if you wanna engage in the Muse Meditation Program, learn about meditation and use that meditation to go to sleep, I think that can be a very effective mechanism for learning how to sort of wind down at the end of the night and go to sleep. And there are training programs for Muse that sort of teach you how to get into that mind frame. Carlos Aros Mina asks about the Muse, can you use it for studying, as in put it on my head and help me stay focused? Okay, so kind of like with the sleep, but a little bit different, I wouldn't use Muse while I was uh, trying to study because you're supposed to be using Muse when you meditate, so you should be immersed in the Muse experience for the most part. Um, you can use it to track brain waves while you're studying and use that for scientific analysis, but I wouldn't like sit there with the Muse on my head and use it to study. And here's why. I would think that trying to study with the Muse on with the audio feedback and the, the program having the birds chirp and everything would actually be distracting. Now, that being said, meditation is a very good training mechanism for attention. So the more that you do the meditative practice every morning, and I'm gonna have a video coming up on this very soon in which I talk about the benefits of meditating every day in the morning versus using it to wind down to the night, and the reason is because you're training your attention through that attention loop to build up your, the skills necessary to have sustained periods of attention. The other thing that's coming up is super interesting. I haven't talked about this on any of my videos yet, but there's a new company called MindLift that has uh, taken the Muse, added an extra sensor that you plug into the back so that you can place it on any part of the head. And the reason why they're doing that is for greater EEG signal and specificity for things like attention training. And they have uh, created this whole website and software program uh, for treatment for things like anxiety and specifically ADHD. So um, that is going to be huge. And you can actually like change the different frequencies that you're targeting with neurofeedback and uh, it's going to make the Muse system so much more flexible. I'm so excited to uh, do an interview with the CEO. Uh, that's gonna be coming up pretty soon. I'm gonna be doing a review of the system as well once I familiarize myself a little bit more with it. But it's an incredible platform these guys have created at MindLift. And what that's gonna do is allow you to use the Muse with an extra electrode uh, and to engage in the software program where you're concentrating on a screen and it gives you neurofeedback through the video whether you're concentrating uh, the right way or not and that's gonna build brain circuits to um, increase attention, especially in people that have ADHD and really allow you to uh, study for longer without having to resort to things like uh, stimulants or something like that. So there's, uh, there's just so much going on with these devices and I really appreciate the, the questions that are coming from you guys. Please keep them coming so we can keep this dialogue going. Um, that's pretty much all I had today. Thanks for tuning in. It's Cody Rawl with Tech for Psych. Talk to you again real soon.